Uh, congratulations, first off, on the big payday. Yeah, congrats, man. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to see, as I told you last year, that he's here with Carolina Panthers. I really am. Uh, you know, I know you played your ass off last year, and you did every bit deserving of that. Well, thank you, Rob. I'm glad you guys are going to be back in a couple of areas. Well, talking about Ron Rivera, we've talked a lot about uh, to a lot of different guys. Ron Rivera, obviously, hadn't played the position. I noticed he wasn't over there in the huddle, and I know it would be tough for me you know, having played that position, not wanting to go out there and coach those guys. But it seems to me like he's letting his coaches do his thing, and he's just kind of being that uh, that general that oversees everything like that. Oh, definitely. He's a guy that's, that's been on this game for a long time. I've played the game for a long time, so he knows how things are supposed to be playing. Um, but you can definitely tell he's a guy you know, when you're capable of doing what you're supposed to be doing. He's a guy that makes sure you're going to be doing what you're supposed to be doing. He's a guy that makes sure you're going to be doing what you're supposed to be doing. He's a guy that makes sure you're going to be doing what you're supposed to be doing. Now, James, we saw you for 17 weeks last year coming in our studio, and I, I felt for you. I mean, it, it got to the point where, you know, Frank and the guys had, had basically run out of questions to ask. You, you just you had to keep talking about the same thing over and over. How exciting is it for you and your teammates to have a new regime, new attitude? Everybody seems in sight. It's just I, I can't even imagine what it must be like to feel like you, you got a chance now. Oh, definitely. You got you got a new Coaches, staff, uh, team, uh, so to speak. So, um, everybody has to get their energy to be enthusiastic. And now you guys got new questions. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great for us right. and you. Works out for everybody. Hey, James, with, with Shockey and Olsen being brought in, how much is that going to help you guys as a linebacker core working against those guys every day, getting ready for some of the tight ends you're going to face throughout the season? Oh, I think it's a great help. You know, in, in offense, we a new offense, you're doing some different things that, you know, stretches up defensively. You know, have a, you know, Olsen and Shockey, you know, two of the better tight ends in the league. I want to say two of the best. Um, going to get some day in day out. I mean, the game's easy. So you got to get the best guys you got to face day in day out and make sure it's not a lot easier. Yeah, but I heard, uh, you know, some of the things that Beast was saying, you know, and I don't know how much of it I'm going to believe or how much of it I'm not, but you go from 30% blitzing last year to 70% blitzing this year. Blitzing, as we've talked about in the past, doesn't mean that it equals sacks. But, you know, timing, disrupting timing, uh, you know, getting to the quarterback every now and then obviously is a good thing. But if you're going to do that, you better have some guys in that secondary that can cover and can tackle. Who are the who are the guys in that secondary? You know, obviously, you, know, you look at Captain Munderland right now, a guy that's you know playing that number two cornerback spot. Chris Gamble's talking about doing a lot of things that have stepped up and are going to be able to make some plays for you. Oh, definitely. You look at our back four between you know Cap, Gam, you know Charles Godfrey, and Sherrod Martin. You know all those guys who have played. I think all those guys are coming out the run. I think the system Coach Mack is putting in with how he runs things makes. It now, when you look at the system, all right, you talk, everybody talk, everybody's talking about the system on this offense and the system on this defense. What is the system? Is it going to be aggressive? Is it going to be attacking? Is it going to be uh, blitzing? Is it going to be, you know, what is this system? Well, you know what? I think you just named the system right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be aggressive. It's going to be attacking. It's going to be blitzing. And um, if I told you any more than that, I'd be telling you everything. <laughs> What was your offseason like? Obviously, it had to be a lot of question marks, not only with the CBA and the lockout, but your, you know, your contract status obviously was unknown. Uh, how did you keep yourself sane during the offseason? A lot of golf. Uh, That's what I hear. And yeah, I, I hear you a lot got, of sand. And I hear you need to play a lot, a lot of sand. Uh, somebody's upset. <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell the story here. We go to Hoopty Classic over okay, here. Yeah. And, I, and I look out there and I'm like, okay, who's this going to be? It must be Wesley Walls. It must be Jordan. Big Frank was must, upset. Yeah, and I look out here you know, with my ball, and there's a ball, another four, three, four yards oh, you know, right in front four, of it. Three, four, <laughs> yeah. four. He's not telling the truth, is he? And I look oh. at it, and it's James Anderson. I'm like, first off, we're playing the gold tees, not the red tees, James. Oh, so get get back to the regular oh, tees yeah. and go out there and hit it. Well, no. Last time I checked, the old guys played from the gold tees. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the young guys played from the back. Uh, that's, that's, that's right. But, you know, James has worked on his game. And, you know, the funny story is, uh, you know, that that's part of it. But the funny story is that at the very end, they pick, you know, four teams that oh, they go compete on, against man. Jordan. Really, really and, you know, he's thinking, I haven't heard my name yet. They're, they're, we're down to three. We're, or, we're down to five. We're down... And the last two teams, and there was a scorecard playoff, and he got eliminated. He was pumping his back. <laughs> no, no, win. no, okay, first of all, this is how they set it up. There was four teams going into the finals. You know, there was only four teams left, and my team was part of the four. But the fifth team, they said, oh, now it was a tie in the scorecard playoff. No, once the fifth team's gone, the four teams left, they go to the championship. 
It was shenanigans. <laughs> shenanigans. Yeah, yeah. It was shenanigans. Hey, we, he got the law. Tom Fuller is going home. I asked Goodson about how big of an impact it was having D'Angelo back to make. I feel like the best backfield in the NFL. How big is it to have Thomas Davis to match up with you and Beeson? As far as I think, now one of the best linebacker cores in the NFL. I mean, you just look at it. You get you put all the pieces together. Um, actually, we had you know great linebackers like Dan and you know. Uh, Williams come in there and step on the play great ball, but then you're missing that one piece that everybody's talking about. TD has finally put everything together as a backer and having a Pro Bowl season, having a great year, so to bring that kind of player back with his calendar and stuff, I think he's up there. It puts out a lot of this, you know, put out a lot of coal on the market. You know, James, I haven't asked anybody else this question. I wanted to say it for you. Okay, I'm yeah, no, I mean, and it's, it's, it's not a tough question. It's about John Casey. Uh, the way that John Casey and what John Casey has meant to this organization. Uh, you know, you've played with him for several years, but, you know, when you look at a loss like that, it's not just a kicker. It's more than that. Tell us a little bit about John Casey and the loss of him. And, not, and I'm not saying that Orlando Mari is going to be, you know, not a good kicker or anything like that, but the loss of John Casey to this locker room means what? Oh, it means a lot. Um, you look at a guy like Casey, on the field he did his job, but his impact was more so in the locker room because he was always the same guy. Always a solid leader, always did things the right way. I mean, he pulled young guys in and showed them, okay, welcome to the NFL, we're supposed to be in A, B, and C. And so, all those leadership type skills I have, an old guy that's been around and done it the right way, you lose a guy like that, that's going to be a huge gift for you. Yeah, you know, we look at expectations moving into the season, and, you know, we talked about, you know, almost, you know, beating a dead horse, but, you know, there's a lot. And they're high, believe it or not. They're high, and that's a good thing. You know, having, you know, after going through a season of two and fourteen last year, the expectations. I don't know if it's necessarily win eight, nine, ten games, but the excitement that we have a new coaching staff and new quarterback. The challenges that you, you have as a team now moving forward are what you know when you start looking at these expectations and trying to go out there and meet them. Well, you just gotta look at you know in this type of year with this short amount of time together. The challenge is getting up on the same page with some continuity. You got a whole bunch of new players coming in, you got new coaches bringing their schemes. So when you try to tie all with new and get all together, that takes time. So our job is to get the time and right with the, with the games and they come up with some wins. Now, Saturday night, you finally get to go get hit somebody else other than the people.